Myanmar's leader Aung San Suu Kyi was once considered a beacon of democracy who stood up to the country's powerful military leaders. Now that military has seized control and arrested her, replacing her with a military general. It says the action is legally justified, but many reject that. There are concerns as an institution that the election results will trigger uh, government policies that will weaken the military's power in the system. I think uh, everyone in Myanmar understands that, that they're using the law to their advantage. The coup is a culmination of a turbulent relationship between Suu Kyi and the military that's been going on for decades. Suu Kyi is the daughter of the late nationalist leader Aung San, and she spent much of her youth overseas. She returned home in 1988 when she joined student-led protests against the military that had taken power in a 1962 coup. The movement was crushed and hundreds of protesters killed. A year later, she was imprisoned in her family home and would spend 15 years in detention. In 2010, the military released Su Chi, who walked free among large crowds of supporters. It is difficult to achieve democracy, and after we achieve democracy, it is hard to maintain. We have to do a lot of work, and we have to take things slowly. In an historic shift from military rule, Suu Kyi's National Democratic Party came to power in 2015. She became state councillor and the de facto leader of Myanmar. But after five decades in power, the military maintained much control. The constitution allowed it control of defence and interior ministries, and it was guaranteed a quarter of seats in parliament. That gave it enough power to veto changes to the constitution. Suu Kyi is extremely popular in Myanmar. In 2019, she appeared in the International Court of Justice, where she defended the military against allegations of genocide. In 2020's November election, her NDL party won a landslide victory. The military claimed the win was fraudulent. Just over two months later, it seized power by force, provoking widespread criticism. Suu Kyi's previous detention did little to undermine her popularity. But now it's unclear how active and vocal her supporters will be under threat of military action. Laura Budamanli, Al Jazeera. Let's now speak to David Matheson, who's a Yangon-based analyst at Myanmar. He's joining us from Chiang Mai in Thailand. Thanks for speaking to us on the news hour. So we have a situation now where the military is saying that it will hold on to power for one year and then it will pass it on to the civilian government. How likely is that? Uh, well, whenever militaries stage a coup and, and set a time limit, um, I, I think it's fair to say don't trust them. Um, once they get a taste of power, um, uh, I, I don't think whatever time frame um, that they commit to can actually be trusted. Um, you know, and, and all of these promises that, that we're seeing coming out today that they want to hold another election and, 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 and all of these things, this is fundamentally a naked grab of power. Um, and I don't think that the commander-in-chief and, and those close to him can be trusted anymore to actually... So what do you um, think their longer uh, game plan is? I, I, I think holding on to power and, and, and basically shifting things um, to maintain their interests. Now, conventional wisdom last week was that they've got it so good anyway, why would they actually stage a coup? Um, well, obviously, their, their calculations are, are, are much different. I think that they can better serve their interests um, holding on to power like this. And, um, and, and unfortunately, the democratic progress of the country will suffer. I mean, that's the thing. You talk about their interests, but they already had um, significant power and they were looking after their interests in Myanmar. So uh, just a few days ago, they also appeared to walk back threats of a coup. So why do you think they did this now? Um, I, I think it's, it's, it's essentially about one man. It's about the commander-in-chief, Min Aung Lai. And he had, no, uh, um, he had no retirement plan. He wanted to hold on to power. And he decided to take the entire institution of, of, of the military with him. And he's been setting up, I think, for several months this very careful narrative um, that there was something deeply rotten with the elections, which is just not true. Um, you know, the, the, there were certainly deficiencies, but, but the extent of, of, the, uh, of the malfeasance that the military is, is, is alleging is just not true. I think this is all about um, the deluded grandeur of, of, of one man. 
and the fact that the military thinks that, that it can actually advance its interests by holding on to you know, all the levers of power. And unfortunately, I think that's going to be counterproductive both for them, but definitely for the rest of the country. What do you think will happen on the ground? Because the uh, Aung San Suu Kyi, uh, the NLD leader, has called for protests. Do you think people will actually come out and protest? I think if you compare some of the public um, outpouring of support for Aung San Suu Kyi and the NLD ahead of the election and the, the jubilation over the, the, the landslide victory, um, this is essentially a betrayal of all of those people who voted for Aung San Suu Kyi. So I, I do expect um, some backlash. People will be furious throughout the country. I mean, there is no way that the military can argue that this was a close election, that, that there was um, a graft and fraud in, in, in involved. Um, which could question the outcome. And so, so people will quite rightly see this as, as, as a grab for power and that the, the, the military are sore losers um, and, and, and basically want to take over the country again. This is a massive leap backwards and, and people have been used to their freedoms over the past 10 years. Um, and, and the military is directly challenging the people. It's not just an elite grab of power. This is the military challenging most of the people of Myanmar. What do you think the range of options will be for the international community to consider? I mean, some countries have already weighed in, some countries in Europe, as well as the Secretary of State in the United States. I, I think that there is no other choice but for widespread condemnation across the board. Um, you know, Japan was one of the first countries to endorse the elections after they were held in November. I think they're going to be exasperated by what's going on because they've been a big supporter of Aung San Suu Kyi and they've tried to engage with the military to a certain extent. I think China will just be um, really quite exhausted um, with the inability of the military to actually be rational actors. For the West, I think it's going to be a massive betrayal over all the support that, that Western donors have given to this democratic transition over over the past decade. I think uh, the countries of, of Southeast Asia will be really quite um, quite frustrated with, um, with the Myanmar military for, for doing this. Um, and certainly at a time during the pandemic and, and lots of, um, of economic crises going on, this just makes um, the military look um, incredibly uh, bad faith in, 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 in their commitment to, to democracy and it makes them look incompetent. So I think the, the international community direction is going to be very, very negative. And for lots of countries like the United States and Australia, there's, there's probably legal triggers that will have to come into force because of a coup d'etat. Um, so this will further serve to isolate Myanmar just to the time in which it was, it was opening up to the world over the past several years. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, David Matheson, for speaking to us from Thailand.